Dear brothers and sisters, inshallah this khutbah will be mostly in English and the texts from the Quran and Sunnah will be recited in Arabic, maybe some explanation in Arabic in between. A change from previous khutbahs because I want to take advantage of the bigger gathering today to cover as much topic as, as I possibly can. <clears throat> First of all, uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has extended our lives to witness the month of Sha'ban, which is a great month that precedes the glorious month of Ramadan. I reminded people in the last khutbah and again in this khutbah, we're still in the month of Sha'ban. You can fast. You can fast before the middle of Sha'ban and you can fast after the middle of Sha'ban, no problem. I say this because there is a weaker opinion that once the middle of Sha'ban comes, you should not be fasting. No, you can fast. Prophet ﷺ used to fast most of Sha'ban, except a few days, which means that he used to fast before the middle and after the middle, obviously. And fasting Sha'ban has great meanings that I mentioned in the previous khutbah. I will remind again. Sha'ban is the month in which the deeds of the whole year are presented and examined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all know that we have so many shortcomings and so many sins and so many evil deeds that we have committed throughout the year. So this is a month of showing an apology to ask for forgiveness, to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for all that has happened and has come out of us throughout the past throughout the past year. We, when we commit sins, we commit sins by violating what Allah has made prohibited. So we display to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are ready to abstain from what you have made prohibited. Not only that, we are ready to abstain from what you have made halal by fasting. For subhanallah, the meaning in fasting is a great meaning that you show that nothing is dearer to you than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even your basic needs in life, the food and drink, and even your desires, you are willing to sacrifice and let go of all this only to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to seek His mercy, to seek His forgiveness, to seek His pleasure. But subhanallah, fasting has so many good meanings. Prophet one time was asked, a sahabi asked him, give me advice by one act of worship. He said, alayka bis-sawm fa'innahu la mithla lah. He said, try to fast a lot. There's nothing like fasting. Prophet ﷺ also said, صيام ثلاثة أيام من كل شهر يذهبنا وحر الصدر. If you fast three days of every month throughout the year, they will know they will, your heart will be cleansed from any evil that could be in the heart, such as envy, such as a grudge. Even the wasawis of shaitan will become very weak. They may even totally go away from your heart if you continuously. Uh, or, or frequently fast for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِلَّا الصَّوْمْ فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجِزِي بِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen fasting out of all the acts of worship. He says, this is sincerely for me, exclusively for me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only that, if you look at fasting, it is the longest ibadah you can ever do. When you fast, you fast at least 12 hours. Has any one of us stood in prayer for 12 hours ever? Never. Even if you go for Umrah, two hours and you're done with the Umrah, correct? But fasting, you are continuously engaged in worshiping Allah, in pleasing Allah, no matter what you are, else you are engaged with. You can be pleasing Allah by fasting and working. You can be pleasing Allah and spending time with your family. You can be pleasing Allah and making money. Subhanallah. So fasting is something that the Sahaba used to like. Umm Salama used to say, how wonderful is fasting? I can be laying on my bed and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Correct? While you are fasting. That is a good reminder for importance of fasting in Sha'ban and fasting in general. And of course, it's a preparation for Ramadan. You start Ramadan and then you are tired and you find you're struggling half of Ramadan because we are not used to, we are not used to fasting. To get this feeling out of the way and to enjoy fasting in Ramadan, we have to prepare ourselves before, before Ramadan. And also another reminder is the, what is coming tonight is the middle of Sha'ban, the middle of the night, middle night of Sha'ban, Laylat al-Nisf, Min Sha'ban, which is also a glorious night. One of the, before I mention the, the hadith on this matter, one of the righteous predecessors, Tabi'in says, his name is Ata ibn Yasar, he says, Ma min laylatin ba'da laylat al-Qadr afdal min laylat al-Nisf min Sha'ban. He says, there is not a night throughout the year that is after laylat al-Qadr, of course, he says, that is more, uh, that is more valued than the night of the middle of Sha'ban. So you have laylat al-Qadr, number one, 
The second night after that is the night of the middle of Sha'ban. And the ahadith are clear on this matter. I will mention two ahadith which are authentic in this matter because there are many ahadith that are not authentic. Some of them are fabricated. I'll mention the authentic and then I'll mention a fabricated hadith so you know that it is fabricated. You don't have to act by it. The authentic hadith narrated by Imam, Imam al-Bayhaqi in his book Shu'ab al-Iman that the Sahabi Abu Thalab al-Khushani said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when the night of Sha'ban comes, إِذَا كَانَ لَيْلَةُ النَّصْفِ مِنْ شَعْبَانِ اِطَّلَعَ اللَّهُ إِلَىٰ خَلْقِ فَيَغْفِرُ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَيُمْلِي لِلْكَافِرِينَ وَيَدْعُوا أَهْلَ الْحِقْدِ بِحِقْدِهِمْ حَتَّى يَدْعُوا It says Allah on the night of the middle of Sha'ban would observe his slaves, his servants, the people. He will forgive the believers and he will يُمْلِي لِلْكَافِرِينَ which means that allow them to enjoy this life because this is what Allah does for people who reject them. He allows them to enjoy this life and they are deceived by that that Allah is pleased with them. This is called imla. Allah will let them, oh, have more money, have more sex, have more uh, uh, reputation, have more ranking and so, have more fame. Because you rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't mean Allah will take you right away. The punishment is in the hereafter. The reward for the believers also is in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the believers and give chance to the non-believers, the people who have rejected him. And he will leave those people who have grudges in their heart until they take the grudge out of their heart. Which means if you are a believer, you should try to cleanse your heart in this night from any kind of grudge or, or any kind of dispute you have with any other believer. You should cleanse your heart from this. If you have a problem with some of your relatives, you should try to solve these problems and connect with your kinship again. Ibn Majah narrates that Abu Musa al-Ash'ari reports that the Prophet sallallahu said, إن الله لا يطلع في ليلة النصف من شعبان فيغفر لجميع خلقه إلا لمشرك أو مشاهد. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at his slaves in the, in the middle night of Sha'ban and he will forgive all his creation except the mushrik, those polytheists, the people who don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or associated in worship with him أو مشاهد or somebody who has a dispute, a quarrel, a grudge with someone else. Again, the same, the same points. If you have belief and if you have a clean heart towards other believers, these are the conditions for forgiveness in the middle night of Sha'ban. So we try to enhance our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, engage in act, good acts of worship and improve our relationships with other Muslims, especially the relatives. This is insha'Allah a guarantee that you will be forgiven in this night of the middle of Sha'ban. While people who are engaging in shirk polytheism, association in worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or they are engaged in sin, or they have problems that they have not settled with other Muslims and grudges and disputes and hatred and envy, those are the people who are depriving themselves from Allah's mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is said to Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr Siddiq, when people talked badly in a very horrible way about his daughter Aisha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu and one of them was actually his cousin. He talked badly about Aisha, radiallahu anha, Umm al-Mu'mineen, wife of Prophet sallallahu daughter of Abu Bakr Siddiq. And Abu Bakr Siddiq used to actually support this man financially. He was the one giving him money monthly. So this man was relying on Abu Bakr Siddiq even in his livelihood. And still he said bad things, horrible things about Aisha radiallahu anha. So Abu Bakr Siddiq, of course, any one of us would do even more than this. But he says, I will not, I will not give him any more money. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after he displayed and confirmed the innocence of Aisha radiallahu anha in Surah Al-Nur, Allah said, Which means that Allah is saying to Abu Bakr Siddiq and anyone who falls in the same situation, that do not swear by Allah because Abu Bakr Siddiq swore that Wallahi, I will not give him any more money. Wala ya'tali, do not swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ulul fadli minkum was that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you wealth and prosperity. Wala ya'tali ulul fadli minkum was sa'a ay yu'tu ulul qurba. Do not swear that you will not give your relatives. Wal masakeen and the poor. Wal muhajirin fi sabillah and those who have migrated for the sake of Allah. Subhanallah. Uh, I think his name was Handala. He had migrated. He was amongst some muhajirin. 
And despite the awful thing that he's did, done, Allah still called him from muhajirina fi sabilillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not wipe away that good deed, that enormous good deed that he did for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He called him a miskeen. He called him a relative. Of course, he is a relative of Abu Siddiq and he is a miskeen. But on top of that, Allah called him wal muhajirina fi sabilillah. Always muhajirin fi sabilillah is a good quality mentioned in the Quran. Allah gave this good quality to this man despite the bad evil deed that he has done. And Allah is reprimanding Abu Bakr Siddiq. Why do you swear not to give such a man just because he did something harmful to you? Do not swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to withhold your provision for this man. And forgive. Don't you want that Allah forgive you? So if you want Allah to forgive you, you forgive other people. You only forgive if you are harmed. And that, that's where forgiveness comes. If you feel the pain that you want to retaliate, and on top, but after that you still give away all these bad feelings and you forgive for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is very important for us brothers and sisters to realize that our relationships with, with our fellow Muslims, and especially family and kinship, is essential for acquiring the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His forgiveness. People should not think one way that it is only the relationship between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's part of it. That's the main part, of course. Because shirk, immediately there's no hope of forgiveness. But the second thing is how you deal with other Muslims. There's a hadith by, narrated by Abu Huraira that the Prophet sallallahu said, تفتح أبواب الجنة يوم الاثنين والخميس يوم الاثنين والخميس فيغفر الله لكل عبد لا يشرك بالله شيئا إلا رجلا كانت بينه وبين أخيه شحناء فيقول الله عز وجل يعني فيقول أنظروا هؤلاء أنظروا هذين حتى يصطلح رواه مسلم. This hadith narrated by Abu Hurairah. The Prophet صلى الله said that on Mondays and Thursdays the gates of heavens are opened. Allah سبحانه وتعالى on those days will forgive. Every slave and servant of his who does not associate in worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except somebody who has a problem and a dispute and a quarrel with another brother of his. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say then that leave those aside until they settle this dispute. For subhanallah, even a little qadr, what happened when Laylatul Qadr was revealed to Prophet sallallahu and he came out running to tell the Sahaba when Laylatul Qadr is. There was two Sahabi, two, two of the Sahaba who got into an argument. And Prophet ﷺ settled this argument between them. And during that time, Allah lifted this memory from his mind. And Prophet ﷺ said, I came out to tell you about when Laylatul Qadr is. And Allah basically wiped it out of my mind because of this, because of this argument. So we have to know that. Salah Dhat al-Bayn. To have good relationships between the Muslims. Please come forward. There are some brothers still not able to come to the masjid. That good relationships with, between the Muslims is the cause for forgiveness and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While having disputes, envy, grudge, arguments and fighting amongst the Muslims is a reason for deprivation from the mercy and forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, fasting the day of the middle of Shaban, it is one of the ayam al-beat. It is one of those preferred days for fasting in general. It has no specific virtue for Shaban. But for 13, 14, 15 in general, in every month, have a virtue of fasting. The hadith that is fabricated in relation to Sha'ban is the hadith that says, إِذَا كَانَ لَيْلَةً نَصْمٍ شَعْبَانٍ فَقُومُ لَيْلَهَا وَصُومُ يَوْمَهَا This is a fabricated hadith. We don't act by it. But it says that when the night of the middle of Sha'ban comes, pray at night, that night, and fast the next day. Basically, the other hadith are sufficient and suffice for us to know that we have to improve our relationship, improve our tawheed, our iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, engage in acts of worship, but we don't do anything special. We don't, for instance, come to the masjid and pray together like taraweeh, for instance. This is what is not part of the sunnah, but to have a good relationship with Allah and then with fellow Muslims, especially your relatives, is an important point. And it is what entitles you to, for forgiveness and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this night. The next point I wanted to talk about is that, that the belief, this was the main topic, but inshallah we only have maybe seven, ten minutes for, to start this topic and we'll continue this topic in some other khutbah inshallah. The main topic I wanted to talk about is, the topic is that, that our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a blind belief. It is a belief 
belief that is based on sound evidence and logic and facts. This is a difference between the belief of the Muslims in Allah and the belief of any other religion on, on this earth. And that is why every other religion on this earth is based on blind faith. But for us, alhamdulillah, if you read the Quran, you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basing our belief and teaching us the belief based on evidence and based on, based on logic, based on science. I will mention a few examples of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Am khuliqu min ghayri shay'in, am humul khaliqun, am khalaqu samawati wal ard, bal la yuqinun. Very logical argument. Allah says, did they come into existence without any creator? Am khuliqu min ghayri shay'in. Or, am humul khaliqun. Or are they the creators? Subhanallah. It is a very logical argument. We all know by the basic instincts and principles and knowledge that Allah has given even to the child, to the baby, that nothing happens without a doer. There is no creation without a creator. There is no effect without... Uh, there is no change without uh, some kind of uh, power or doer behind it. Even if you find a, ch a little boy, a child, who's maybe a couple of months old, and you maybe touch him in the, on the cheek or you pull his hair a little bit, immediately he will look or she will look to see who did this. It is an instinct in us that nothing comes into existence without a fa'il, which means a creator. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about this argument. Am khuliqu min ghayr Do you think you have been created from nothing? That's impossible. Am humul khaliqun. Khaliqun. Or did you actually create yourself? How can you create yourself when you were not existent at that point? At, the, at that point? The only other possibility is that there's another creator. So this is one example. But the examples of this are many. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said this word in a certain order. And some people are deceived, think because things are going like a clock, then, the, then we don't need a creator behind this. Since we understand how it functions, then we don't need a creator. If you understand, if you're a mechanic and you understand how the car functions, does this mean that the car did not need a manufacturer just because you understand how it works? This is totally separate. It's a totally separate argument. Okay? And Namrud, when he was arguing with Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ibrahim qala, qala rabbiya alladhi yuhyi wa yumit. Allah is the one who brings to life, who gives life and takes life. He said, ana uhyi wa yumit. He said, I also give life and I take life. So he brings maybe two prisoners of his and he kills one and he says this one I was going to kill I didn't kill him so I gave him life subhanallah this is a deception of the kuffar they try to deceive so Ibrahim alayhi salam says he says okay Allah brings the sun out of the east you try to bring it out of the west then the argument was was gone and so on. And you can see the, the ayat, وَكَذَلِكَ نُورِ Ibrahim. Look at the ayat in Surah Al-Waqam. أَفَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا تَحْرُثُونَ أَأَنْتُمْ تَزْرَعُونَهُ أَمْ نَحْنُ الزَّارِعُونَ He says, look at the plants that you... Uh, look, at, look, at, look at the plants or the trees that you plant. أَأَنْتُمْ تَزْرَعُونَهُ أَمْ نَحْنُ الزَّارِعُونَ Are you the ones who bring forth these plants or I am the one to do so? The seed you did not create. The seed has the genetic information for this whole tree. The whole life of this tree is programmed in that little seed that sometimes you cannot even see. Habbat Khardal, for instance. It's so small, but it has all the genetic information for this whole tree with all its branches, with its lifespan, with all the fruits it will bring out. Even if it lives 100 years or 200 years or 300 years, it's all programmed in that small seed, subhanAllah. And you put this seed in the ground. You did not create the earth. But even that is not enough. Then you need water. He did not bring the water out down from the sky. He did not bring the water down from the heavens. And it needs oxygen and air. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created all this. Okay? All you did is you took the creation of Allah. You put it in another creation of Allah. You, and then you waited for the mechanisms that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made available to serve us in this life and make our life possible. You benefited from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and blessed us with to enjoy this food at the very end. Allah says, And that is why when people are ignorant, 
and arrogant and reject believing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah may at once give them this plant and they are so happy with it and they are looking forward to eat and make money and spend and so on and enjoy life. And Allah in one night can bring down jaiha, which means a storm or hail or a fire and take all this away in one second. And you see the story in Surah Al-Kahf, this between the two men who had an argue, one was a believer and one is, was a non-believer and they argued about this and Allah took everything in one night. هنالك الولاية لا فأصبح يقلب كفيه على ما أنفق فيها ويقول يا ليتني لم أشك بربي أحدا then he was so sorry and going like this sad and sorry and then he said يا ليتني I wish I did not associate in worshiping with Allah سبحانه وتعالى to believe in the asbab and neglect the one who gave us all these means is shirk it is a shirk ابن عباس said من قال لولا الكلب لسرقة الدار فقد أشرك if you say if you, if you say and utter this word that if it were not for this dog the thief would have stolen our money this is shirk subhanallah yes it's a means the dog helps scare the thief away but who created you and created your dog and built, and created this house and created the earth and created the heavens we have to forget about the asbab i mean in belief but we have to take them very seriously in in, pra- in practical uh, in practical life asbab we are commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to follow the asbab. Don't we read this in Surah Al-Kahf all the time? Hmm? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commending what he has done. He was very successful in following the asbab. But he never relied on the asbab. What did he say at the very end when he built the, the wall between those people to protect them from the invaders? He says, did he say this is because of my doing? He says, what did he say? هذا رحمة he says, this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mercy from Allah. I, I, I did nothing. And when Allah wills, he will take this away as well. For subhanallah, we have to look at those ayat that remind us. Finally, I'll finish with this ayat. من Allah is telling us this argument here that just tell me what you will do. If I will make your life nighttime always, constantly, with no chance of daylight. Imagine this, if all earth was engulfed in darkness forever with no daylight and no sun shining at any point on this earth, wallahi, it may be a few days and all of us will die out of freezing. And energy will die, there will be no energy, there will be no life, there will be no plant, there will be no food. This is if only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes this mechanism that he has put the alternation alteration of day and night man ilahun ghayrullah ya'tikum bidiya he says tell me which god but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bring you daylight subhanallah have you seen anybody bring daylight we have to thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these blessings yes shams sun daylight night these are universal blessings for all humanity but me and you individually this is a blessing for me and blessing for you individually think of it this way Allah has brought the sun for you because nobody can take the sun away from you. Nobody can give, take away the air from you. Nobody can take the water away from you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this to every single one of us. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us steadfast on his religion. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us, our families and Muslims everywhere from every evil. Allah